Hello, in this video, we're going to do some monopoly problems. These are going to be some important math type exam questions that all students should be prepared for. A monopoly faces a market demand given by Q equals 84 minus 0.5P. The monopolist total cost of production is as follows, 12 plus 2Q. The 12 is fixed cost, the 2Q being variable cost. We want to solve for the monopolist inverse market demand. Inverse market demand is where we have the price as a function of quantity. So we're going to take the market demand and we're going to solve this equation up top here. We're going to solve it for P. So moving a few things around, just moving this minus 0.5P over to the other side. And now moving Q to the right hand side, dividing through by one half. Simplifying, we get the inverse market demand. Price equals 168 minus 2Q. Now let's solve for the monopolist revenue and marginal revenue. Revenue is price times quantity, where the price is going to be this 168 minus 2Q. So we're going to make that substitution. So we replace P with 168 minus 2Q, and that's all multiplied by Q. Simplifying here a little bit, we get the total revenue for the monopolist. So the monopolist total revenue and marginal revenue is the derivative of this revenue equation with respect to Q. The derivative of 168Q is 168. The derivative of minus 2Q squared is minus 4Q as I took this exponent on the Q term and multiplied it by the 2 in front of the Q. And then we subtracted 1 from that exponent. Now let's solve for the marginal cost. Here is the firm's total cost of production. Marginal cost is a derivative. Anything in economics that has marginal in it is a derivative result, a slope concept. So the derivative of this total cost equation is just going to be 2. Derivative of 12 is 0. And the derivative of 2q is 2. So marginal cost is constant at $2. Every time the firm produces one more unit of output, its total costs rise by $2. Next, let's solve for the profit maximizing output. We can do that by setting marginal revenue equal to marginal cost. We got these equations right here. So setting marginal revenue equal to marginal cost, and now solving for Q. Moving the 2 over to the other side, and the 4Q over to the other side. And simplifying a little bit now. Uh, we get the profit maximizing output of 41.5 units. Now let's get the profit maximizing price. We're going to take this 41.5 here for Q and plug it into the inverse market demand. Here's the inverse market demand where we have Q. We replace that with our profit maximizing output and we get a profit maximizing price of $85 per unit. Next, let's solve for the monopolist Profit, maximum profit. So profit is revenue minus cost. Revenue is price times quantity. Total cost is just uh, given by the firm's cost of production, which is 12 plus 2Q. So we're going to subtract that entire thing out. And plugging in our values for P and Q. And now simplifying, we get the total profit of $3,432.50. All right, now we're going to solve for consumer surplus. Uh, the key bits of information we need is the inverse market demand, which has a slope of 168. Up here, here's a monopolist demand curve, and there's the slope. Uh, we need the profit maximizing price and quantity. This triangle right here, the area of this triangle, given by the height of the demand curve and the market price, represents consumer surplus. The area of a triangle is one-half base times height. So in this formula here for consumer surplus, we have that one-half. And then we take the difference between the vertical intercept for the demand curve and the market price of $85. And then we multiply that by the profit maximizing output, the number of units that consumers buy. And we get a value here of a little over $1,700.
Now let's solve for producer surplus. Producer surplus is gonna be the difference between the market price and the Marshall cost curve. It's gonna be this entire area. Uh, this happens to be a rectangle in this case. So the area of a rectangle is just width times length. And here's our key bits of information there. The market price, the marginal cost, so the difference there. And then that's going to be over the number of units that the monopolist sells, 41.5. So producer surplus here of about $3,400. And lastly, let's do the dead weight loss. First, we need to figure out what's going on under perfect competition. If this happened to be a perfectly competitive market, price would equal marginal cost. We know that marginal cost is two. So here's our price equation. And where we have P, we're gonna replace that with two. Again, after all, price equals marginal cost. And now we're gonna solve this for Q and we get 83. So under perfect competition, the price is $2, which equals marginal cost and 83 units would be bought and sold. That's going to be this intercept down here, this intersection down here. So our key bits of information to get the dead weight loss, everything I highlighted in bold here, the marginal cost, the quantity under perfect competition, the quantity under monopoly, and the monopoly price. So let me highlight the area first here. Uh, the dead weight loss is going to be this triangle between the height of the demand curve and marginal cost. These units are not being purchased under Monopoly. And so that is going to be the dead weight loss because these units have uh, more marginal benefit than marginal cost, yet they're not being bought or sold under Monopoly. The area of that triangle then is going to be one half 85 minus two. Here's the 85, the marginal cost is two. And then the uh, base of that triangle is just going to be 83 minus 41.5. I have here, we get a value here of a little over $1,700. Okay, that's it.